Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, this afternoon's PSA teaching learning webinar. We'll just give it a couple more minutes for people to uh, join us. Um, we are recording uh, at the moment, so please be aware of that. Uh, and we will publish this on the PSA website. So I'll just give it a minute more for uh, more people to, to, to come in. We're admitting people all the time, admit all. So we'll be starting in uh, just about a minute now, uh, just giving an opportunity for anyone else to join us um, before we start formally. And we are recording this. OK, so I'll, I'll start off now because inevitably, as soon as we start uh, the, the uh, um, session, people will join us. So. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Craig. I'm the co-chair of the PSA's Teaching Learning Network, and I'm delighted to uh, welcome Pete Woodcock from Huddersfield University uh, today to talk to us uh, about work placements, uh, work placements in politics, work placements in politics during COVID. Um, a few bits of housekeeping before we start. Uh, one, we are recording this session and it will be published on the PSA website, so please be aware of that and, um, uh, you know, turn your camera off, for example, if you don't want your, your image to be seen. Uh, please keep your microphones off during the session. Um, that does uh, improve the, the sound quality for us all. If you have any questions for Pete, please post them in the chat. Um, Pete is going to talk for about uh, 30 minutes. Uh, and at the end of that, there'll be question for uh, time for question and answer, uh, and then I will pick questions out of the, the chat and pose those to, to Pete. Um, this is the fourth series of PSA teaching learning uh, webinars. So, um, you know, we continue to, to do what we can to support members uh, moving teaching learning forward. Uh, and please, if you're not already a PSA member, please consider joining. It's a great organisation and without the PSA support, um, events like this couldn't go ahead. So without further ado, uh, over to Pete. Well, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for, I, I do appreciate you all coming because I realise that it's a busy time uh, for us all. Um, uh, my name is Pete Woodcock. I lecture in politics at the University of Huddersfield. And one thing I've done for uh, about three years now um, is run a work placement module uh, and the, the title is a little bit of a misnomer it, it's representative of uh, what is a, a thinly veiled midlife crisis that I'm going through um, by calling it panic at the work placement and in actual fact what I would say is that for a work placement the last 15-16 months has been as trying as I can ever remember it being but nevertheless, I think staff, students have battled on and there are some positives to take out of it. So, you know, whereas this is going to be quite a narrative, I know that some people in teaching and learning don't like heroic narratives of saying what people have done. I certainly don't want this to be seen as being an heroic um, narrative, but rather how we've bumbled through this year. Uh, a, a challenging year and got the best that we possibly could for our students. So uh, I'm just going to share my screen here. Bear with me one second while I find my PowerPoint slides. I'm hoping now you can see a big screen which says panic at the work placement. Uh, Pete Wilcock, can you see that, John? I can. Thanks, Pete. Excellent. Thank you very much. So uh, what I want to do, therefore, is in, in this presentation uh, is, first of all, give a little bit of context about the work placement at Huddersfield. There's not, nothing new about this, um, but just give a, a few background notes. Then I want to talk about the experience of 1920. That is to say, I, 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 I realise I'm stating the uh, obvious here, but whereby the COVID lockdown occurred in sort of March with a month and a bit left of the academic year um, and, and measures that we had to put in place there 
and what I've called in a Gordon Brown style fashion, my red lines, uh, sort of certain decisions I took at that time. And I'll be fascinated to hear your, um, your, your reflections on whether I made the right decisions here. An alternative assessment, which I introduced for the work placements, and then how this led in for planning for this academic year, when we knew, of course, um, that there was going to be problems in delivering the work placement. Uh, I'll reflect on some successes which have come out of this um, and some stumbling blocks which we faced and then finish off with some reflections about if there's anything that we can learn from what we've done over the last sort of 15, 16 months which might inform work placements going forward. So uh, that's what I'd uh, like uh, to do. So um, we, we've had a long history of, uh, of work placements in Huddersfield. Um, 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 the, the, uh, the work placement module was validated in um, uh, 1986. Uh, not by me, I hasten to add. I was um, 12 in 1986. Uh, and it was first uh, delivered in the second year of the undergraduate politics programme in uh, 1987. Uh, uh, so there's two things to remember 1987 uh, for. It was the year that pop music hit perfection with Never Gonna Give You Up coming out uh, and the first iteration of the work placement um, at Huddersfield University. Um, it has remained an element of the second year of studies at Huddersfield Un University ever since and whereby, you know, uh, it, it's not that the module has gone unchanged during that time, um, but there has been an iteration of a work placement since 1987 at Huddersfield. And I hasten to add, it is in most instances, and I shan't bore you with the uh, technical details of the one or two exceptions of this rule, but in most instances, it is a compulsory element of the program. That is to say, um, uh, students um, have to do it. Now, you know, th this, it, it is, I would say, in, in a variety of ways, a transformational experience for students, you know, um, uh, by way of a couple of anecdotes about 12, 13 years ago, when I was uh, first module leader of, of this module, uh, a very pleasant, very bright student uh, came to see me who had absolutely no interest in doing a work placement whatsoever. He felt that this was not why he came to university. He had sufficient um, part-time work and so on and so forth um, and he, 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 he was irked at having to do it and eventually we had to have an adult conversation in which I said look you, you need to do a work placement it's a compulsory element of the degree uh, and, and there, there are problems if you don't. Um, this uh, student then was he thought to himself he might like a, a career in the law um, and so consequently went round law firms and various bits and bobs with his CV. Um, he got a work placement at the Magistrates Court in Huddersfield. Um, he made a lot of contacts, thoroughly enjoyed it. He subsequently got a job at a law firm in Huddersfield, which who then paid for um, or sponsored him to do his conversion course. Um, uh, he then qualified as a lawyer, moved to London, enjoyed working in London for a while and currently lives in Brooklyn um, and, and works for a law firm in New York City. Uh, indeed, he emailed me a couple of years ago um, asking if I could possibly send in my slides from my lecture that I did delivered uh, on Niccolo Machiavelli. And whereas I did provide them, I was slightly worried about giving a New York lawyer slides on Machiavelli. I don't know quite what he'd hope to learn from that, but uh, probably best not know. So, you know, th that was an example of someone who didn't want to do the work placement and got a really positive result out of it. Likewise, anecdotally, another student came to us who, from the very moment that they started studying, indicated that they wanted to go into teaching. Um, and consequently, they took a placement, uh, shadowing a teacher um, in a school um, and hated every minute of it. Now, I thought that this was as much a success as, as the, the previous student I mentioned who found this career in law, because in essence, if you particularly want to do a job in a build up 
to an undergraduate, it's better, I would have thought, to realise that that job is not what you expected um, and look for other career paths in a second year module as an undergraduate as opposed to midway through uh, uh, an expensive PGCE or, you know, when that time and that investment has been taken up. So, you know, th there's been a new numerous success stories and, uh, and, and, um, and, um, uh, and ways in which it's transformed uh, people. Um, now, um, the, the way the module works is that there is a program of workshops and sessions on core employability skills, um, things like CV building, things like preparing for interviews, uh, uh, application forms and how you use transferable skills to answer application forms. So we have, you know, uh, not every week like one would have for another module, but, uh, you know, seven or eight spread across uh, a, a, a year. Students then find something aided by the tutor um, in something broadly political. Um, uh, and when I say broadly political is, is that we look for students to stretch themselves. Um, our colleagues in sociology have a, a, a module in the sociology of the workplace. And there, if a student has a bar job or um, a job in, 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 a, in a supermarket or whatever, a part-time job alongside their studies, they can reflect upon the sociology of the workplace from doing that. There isn't necessarily a requirement for them to find a placement. We um, are, are a little bit more, you, you need to step out of your comfort zone and do something um, uh, different. Uh, students are then assessed on this module in a twofold way. Uh, they do three 500 word blog pieces um, on challenges which come up in their work placement and how they dealt with it. So a sort of three reflective pieces. And then they do uh, a 2,500 word essay emanating from the work placement. And when I say emanating from the work placement, um, what I mean here is that, that they do an essay, not on the placement itself, but something which cropped up of a political issue in the work placement. For example, um, a couple of years ago, uh, a student did a work placement at a careers advice bureau. And um, one issue that cropped up lots and lots and lots was the, the change to the single credit. Uh, I, I can't quite remember um, uh, what they called it, but, the, but that process two or three years ago when various different benefits were combined into one and there were a number of different problems uh, in the iteration of this and so that student did an essay about the, the the politics and the implementation of that policy so it they're not per se talking about the work placement but they rather used the work placement as a vehicle to go in and talk about a political issue um, this year indeed uh, a, a student who i'll mention later on um, did their essay on um on uh, traffic infrastructure uh, and public transportation in West Yorkshire, because this is something which they'd written a report for, for where they did their work placement. So, you know, that, those, that's the way in which they're in, uh, assessed, you know, um, um, and, 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 and get the grades by. And the, the thought here is to try and show how the work placement links to the broader study of politics, as opposed to it being the kind of work placement which I did when I was at school. Uh, when I, I did uh, um, a couple of weeks in a sports shop in Southampton, um, you know, it, it, the, the purpose is not just for students to get into the habit of, of working, but also to show how it links with the broader curricula um, of politics. Now, um, in 1920, uh, that is to say the academic year, 2019-2020, um, of course, the end of which when we sort of went into uh, lockdown, we, we found ourselves in a position, and a position I hasten to add, which is by no means unusual, that you had a third of students who had done their work placement, a third of students who were on the brink of starting it, and, and a, maybe a third of students who were not at that level 
Yeah, I should say that, that, that this is not unusual. It, it, it's perfectly normal often for students to get extenuating circumstances if a, a placement has not been forthcoming or has um, uh, fallen through or something, which allows them a little bit more time over the summer um, or in the reset period to do this. But here in, 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 in the end of the last academic year, um, I, I felt that we were indifferent because there was a group of people who were missing out on their work placements because lockdown occurred and, and there was an understanding, understandable reluctance for people who normally take students on work placements to continue doing that. And secondly, you had a group of students who, you know, were, were, were behind on that journey. So what I introduced was an alternative assessment. Uh, you, you, you remember yesterday that uh, this, um, the assessment is, did I say yesterday? It's not, this paper hasn't been that long. Um, the, the assessment, which I mentioned earlier, is these blog pieces and the essay. And, and of course, these would be tricky to fulfill if one hadn't done a workplace. Um, uh, and so I introduced an alternative assessment, which I'll, I'll discuss uh, in a minute. Um, now, this is the thing, uh, and, and, and this is the thing which might be um, something which is slightly shocking. Um, and it would be fascinating to hear your reflections on this uh, at the end is, uh, student feedback about introducing an alternative assessment so they can pass the module was not overwhelmingly positive, right? Um, and, and the student feedback on this said that they would have much preferred to be able to continue and do their, um, their work placements in the summer or into their third year of studies. Uh, rather than being given this alternative assessment to get through the module uh, at that point. And what's more, I hasten to add, I, I can understand uh, students' perspectives. But uh, as we'll see going through, I perhaps paternalistically did not act upon that feedback um, and, and, and did something slightly different. So I, I developed a set of red lines um, moving forward, but in that... Um, I wanted to ensure that students who had not managed to do the work placement were able to complete the module and do a reflection um, on their employability skills without having to have done a work placement. Um, and that this module shouldn't create a barrier to progression within the course. The, 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 the reason of my thinking here was, is that I was pretty certain um, that if a student had not managed to get a work placement up until March of 1920, then they wouldn't be able to get one over the summer with the way that we were heading with the lockdown. Um, and therefore that they would have had to have trailed 20 credits into their third year of the studies, which would also be characterized by um, uh, the, the, the pandemic. So I, I, I think I acted quite paternalistically is that I wanted to allow students to be able to get through this module um, and concentrate on their third year of studies without this hanging over them in a time of, of the pandemic. So um, that's what um, I decided based upon this. And I introduced an alternative assessment, which was broadly speaking to be considered within the field of a work placement module as opposed to a work placement per se. So if a student had done a work placement, they could do the original assessment. If they um, um, hadn't, they could do this alternative assessment, which was three 500 word blogs on challenges um, that have presented themselves in the, in the search for a work placement or elements that they learned from the work placement. So for example, they could do a blog on, on a, a, you know, the 
the resilience needed when applying for jobs. They could do something on getting their CV up to date. They could do something about the application process. They could do something about an interview process. They, they could reflect on an element of the process of getting a work placement or a job as opposed to the thing itself. Um, they also could do um, a, a 1,000, sorry, a one times two and a half a thousand word skills audit. Um, now here, um, this is the suggested structure, which I gave to students uh, with regards to the skills audit, um, that they could talk about their skills, attributes and values, uh, which they possess and evidence how they have these skills, attributes and values, then talk about how they relate to a career in politics. So for example, if, if um, uh, a student identified that they had a value you know, in, in a commitment to social justice or whatever, and particularly wanted to work in, say, community development, then they could create that link. Or if they had particularly good organisation skills or if they had good IT skills, then they can talk about how they pertain to a degree in politics. Then they could talk about their own career aspirations, whether they want a career in politics um, or if they wanted a career in something else. And if something else, how do they link their skills to those things? And then talk about how skills relate to politics more generally. So, for example, one iteration that we got of this was a student who talked about their IT skills, how um, IT is becoming increasingly important in politics, and then sort of abstracted that to have a really interesting discussion on um, things like Cambridge Analytica, uh, and, and how that related to um, the, um, I was gonna say the Eurovision referendum there, uh, the, the, the European Union referendum uh, and, and subsequent problems there around about data and so on and so forth. So you, you kept the spirit of both employability within this, I felt, but also the notion that we want to link those employability skills to the actual world of politics, to show in, in actual fact that the discussions that we have in a politics degree don't end at the Huddersfield Ring Road. It's a reference for it, which uh, if you don't know Huddersfield will mean nothing to you, but you know, it doesn't remain within the seminar room or the lecture theater, but it applies in, in the actual world of politics. So that, that's what I uh, introduced as an alternative assessment. So there we are, moving on uh, after we'd uh, completed the academic year 1920, which I hasten to add, um, virtually every student got through the module and passed it. Um, we moved to that process, which I'm sure you all went through in various modules of planning for the academic year 2020-21. Um, now, um, there was a number of issues which, a number of steps we could have done. We could have um, um, completely removed the work placement module and introduced uh, 20 credits of, of something else. Um, or we could have made it uh, a sort of more theoretical based um, employability module, which was far more about reflection on skills and abstract discussion of applying for jobs as opposed to involving a work placement. But we decided um, to push for students still to get a work placement in the academic year 2020-21. That, that there is something of value of a student doing a work placement and that it might be possible um, still within this last academic year um, to do that. So to push for students to do a work placement by distance if, if possible. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll mention some examples of where students have done that this year, but always throughout explain that this is to your benefit. Um, it, it, it's, it's a really helpful CV builder, uh, uh, a really good academic skills builder for you to do a work placement, but we know it's tricky. If it isn't going to come to pass, we have that alternative assessment, which we used last year as a backup. backup. Now, there's a certain amount of soldiering on and hoping for the best here. Um, you know, that, that, but ultimately we felt that 
it, it might be possible for students to gain a benefit out of doing a work placement and yet um, the ability to do so were uncertain. So we, we had the sort of um, the backup plan of this alternative assessment. How did it go? Um, you know, for some students, it went very well. One uh, student did a, a, a virtual placement, that is to say, uh, the student never went anywhere other than, you know, his study bedroom or, um, or, or, or the library or whatever, but with Tracy Brabin, Tracy Brabin, I, I, and I'm sorry if I'm being uh, um, uh, 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 patronising here, Tracy Brabin is, or was the MP for Batley and Spen, um, a, a, an area between Huddersfield and Leeds, um, uh, and, and she has subsequently been elected as uh, as the mayor of West Yorkshire, and um, we had a student, a student um, do that. Another went into um, Kirklees TV. Kirklees TV is a community-based uh, TV station, which is all web-based, I hasten to add. Um, and that student did some really good early journalistic work. Uh, another made and curated historic history teaching resources for their former sixth form college. So created a number of videos, but also scoured the web for resources which their former sixth form college can use so students did manage to get placements some of which were physical placements going into a, a, a workplace others which were sort of office linked in a way in which um, I don't probably need to explain to you the way in which we are in our houses at the moment and yet very much linked via Teams and via Zoom or whatnot to our employers um, and others which were far more project based. So, um, uh, uh, you know, some students managed to achieve a work placement. Most, however, um, um, were unable to get uh, a work placement. Um, there was an understandable reluctance um, for some people to to give work placements. And anecdotally, uh, this is being felt across the, um, the education sector because I normally um, have a couple of students from Greenhead College, which is a sixth form college in Huddersfield, um, come to shadow me for work experience. Uh, and I would have been fully prepared to have done that at a distance, but Greenhead College pulled that program uh, in the end. They, they, they were so struggling to find placements that it would have become so piecemeal for the number of students that they had to deliver it to. So they, they pulled the program, which is um, 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 disappointing for them. Uh, the majority of students have passed this module. Um, the, the big difficulty came for some students was the change in government guidance, which occurred in a, around about November uh, of, of last year. And if you cast your mind back to this, this was the, um, this was the uh, early lockdown, if you will, of, of universities, which would allow students to go home um, um, for, for the Christmas holidays. Um, and, and part and parcel of that is that students were not allowed to do work placements during that time. Uh, why this was particularly frustrating is, is um, three students ended up losing placements as a result of this. And, and I actually had to tell them, look, you cannot go and do this placements. Um, and um, one student, for example, was due to go into their uh, former sixth form college and shadow the government and politics uh, teacher. Um, and was, was literally due to come in one day and I said, sorry, mate, you, you can't. Um, and what is particularly frustrating about this is it, it seemed to me that this model of um, students returning home for the Christmas holidays was based upon a very particular understanding of the student experience these days. One of the students in question um, uh, who, who was due to teach at their sixth form college, lives at home with his parents um, and commutes in to university when the opportunity allows. Um, 
And uh, as a consequence, he wasn't allowed to do his work placement um, for reasons which would not have affected the safety of his family. Um, so there was some deeply frustrating moments within that. And also this student ended up, I, I think the, um, the, the college felt that he was messing them around um, and, and subsequently didn't get back to him about doing the placement in the second term when it, it was entirely beyond that student's control. Um, I would say my biggest challenge was this. And again, this is something which should be interesting to hear your reflections on. Uh, the, you, you will remember earlier that I said that we were pushing for students to get their work placement. Um, but if they didn't, they would have the alternative assessment uh, to fall back on, right? Um, now, um, this was made very clear and students knew that there would be an alternative assessment. What they didn't know at the beginning, however, was precisely the nature of that alternative assessment. And, and, and this, this was my concern, right? With um, students being the students that they are, plus the uncertainty of the times in which we live in, I was concerned that if I released what the alternative assessment would be right at the beginning of the term, that a number of the students who would have looked for um, work placements might therefore not do so and just take the alternative assessments. Um, you know, um, so that was my concern. And yet at the same time, it was a serious piece of work. It was a piece of work in which I did instruction for um, and students are entirely right in, in thinking that we need to know what our assessment is for a piece of work. So. As a consequence, I, I prevaricated about when to release. I, a number of students came to me uh, uh, just before Christmas and sort of said, we, we want the details of the alternative assessment. And I sort of said, it, it, it will come. And in the end, I released it shortly after Christmas, uh, beginning of February. And, and, and there, I, I'm not sure if I hit the right note, whether I should have just made it clear right at the very beginning what the alternative assessment was uh, and keep one's fingers crossed. Uh, but my concern was is that this would reduce students' willingness to look for um, um, uh, work placements in very troubled times in which we were living. So, some reflections. Um, if we assume um, that things will return broadly to normal in the next academic year. And I do want to stress if um, here. Um, I think there's some value in keeping the alternative assessment, a reflection on people's skills, values, attributes, and how these link to a world of politics. Um, what I uh, am less keen about is this notion of the alternative, that this is, that you have, this is the assessment, and this is the alternative assessment if you can't do A. So I think in retrospect, what I would have liked, what I'd like to do and what I'll do mo moving forward is I will combine the assessment with the alternative assessment and have an assessment which could be structured in a different way. Um, I, I, I think the more I think about it, that there is something of value in the alternative assessment, uh, which it would be useful for students to do but keeping it as an alternative, a sort of a, a safety net is the problematic bit. So I'll look to have an assessment for the module, which could be tackled in different ways. And, and let's be honest with you. Um, students might struggle to get work placements for a whole host of reasons. Um, uh, uh, and, and the pandemic is but one. So, um, you know, uh, and uh, much as some students may have disapproved of um, introducing an alternative assessment and, and not prolonging the module, I still maintain that that was the right thing because the, um, I, I don't know what your progression rules are at the universities in which you are, but you're allowed to trail a module into your third year. But then if you came up cropper on another module, um, then 
you, there are some circumstances when you can trail uh, 40 credits into your final year, but would it have been a positive thing in the middle of a, a global pandemic for a student studying that for their third year of studies, trailing a work placement, which was even harder to get perhaps than the previous year. Um, those students who um, uh, didn't manage to get a work placement this year have missed out on a very valuable learning opportunity and they've missed out on um, a valuable CV building um, opportunity. Uh, what I intend to do next year from induction week onwards is really push the notion of volunteering, um, taking internships and so on and so forth to try and bolster their CVs in a way in which that they've missed out on because of the module. So some tentative conclusions. The module did not run as positively as it done in previous non-COVID years. I mean, it, it, it's, um, uh, there is, whereas I'm moderately happy overall uh, with the module, given the circumstances that we found ourselves in, and I think the students did some fantastic work. I, I would have not wanted it this way. Um, uh, and yet students had place in their program of study to reflect upon employability in this link with uh, the degree of politics. And I feel the red lines which I introduce help students to complete the module in a timely fashion. Um, and that that was probably a better option than removing the module overall. But I think what it has done is make me reflect on the nature of assessment um, uh, and, and uh, what I'll try and do is remove this notion of two streams and have an assessment which can be tackled in many ways. And uh, John Donna, I promised I would speak for 30 minutes and I think I might have gone five minutes or so over. Uh, my, my apologies. Uh, there. Thanks, Pete. That's been a really uh, interesting talk, really helpful. Uh, particularly like, if I might say so, the way that you partly gave us a warts and all uh, picture of the things that go wrong. And I think so often in teaching, the things we learn from are the things that go wrong or don't go perfectly. And the more we can talk about those and share them, the more we can be of, of, of help to each other. Um, in terms of tackling these things. And also, if I can say so, I think that the kind of very much you gave us a picture of your thinking as you went along, again, unpackaging some of those decisions, if you like, and reflecting on them. And, and certainly this has been a year where we've all, to some extent, been making stuff up as we go along uh, and, and hoping we've got it right. And then going back and saying, OK, well, if I now knew what I'd known, if I, if I knew then what I know now, uh, you know, would I have done it the same? And I think that's been that's been really helpful. The whole range of questions. I'll kick off with one. Um, it's come from the chat, um, and I suppose it comes back to some of those sort of initial questions of why would you why do you have a work placement? Um, question from somebody: uh, Do you have any data uh, that having a compulsory work placement at Huddersfield has been a driver for recruitment? Does it put people on or put people off coming to Huddersfield to study politics? Any views on that? Um, I, I mean, I think in the in the in the past we we've really pushed that, and it, it could have. I mean, it, it has to be said again, Watts and all the recruitment of, of politics at Huddersfield is not healthy uh, at the moment. I, I think that there's a, a number of reasons for that. Uh, I think sometimes uh, post 92s have felt the pinch in the last few years, um, as say Russell groups have expanded, uh, perhaps and. Um, um, uh, but, you know, I, I, I think anecdotally, it certainly is the case that students benefit from it, because this is the thing. Um, uh, I, I, I realise that, that there's a golden rule, isn't there, of um, ministers when they're talking about higher education, how long they have to go into their speech before they say, when I was at university. And, and I, I feel I've gone at least 40 minutes into it. I, I was an undergraduate at the London School of Economics in the in the mid 90s and we didn't have a work placement and, and neither was there any expectation because it was assumed that we would do 
outside activities. It was assumed that we would do internships and so on and so forth. You don't have to tell Oxford, Cambridge, LSE, Harvard. You know, there, there's certain types of students you do. Um, I, I think sometimes students that we have at, uh, at Huddersfield need a little bit of persuasion to show how um, um, important these things are and a little bit of hand-holding. Um, to, to give you an anecdote um, of a conversation that one of my colleagues had with one of uh, my uh, one of our students uh, and in a first year tutorial uh, my colleague was asking what their career aspirations were and why they decided to come to Huddersfield. And one student said, but I'd really like to work in the diplomatic service. Uh, um, and when asked why they came to Huddersfield, said, because I want to stay living with my mother and father. Um, and that tension uh, between career aspirations um, and uh, what one would need to do in order to achieve them um, is, is something. I'm afraid I have no data. Uh, on this, but it, it's been part of the offer from Huddersfield for some time. Um, so, um, um, you know, uh, 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 fingers crossed that that was part of it. But um, we're in the process of really revalidating the politics degree uh, at Huddersfield. Uh, and one of the things that is driving us here actually is more employability rather than less. So, um, there it is. Related question to that and sort of links onto what you just said. Uh, is there any evidence that the placement works? And I'll, I'll pitch there if I can in a sort of slightly broader way, um, either for employability or just that it actually plays a particularly catalytic role in, in transforming people's understanding of the political world. So either in terms of the transferable element or the core politics element, do, do you have evidence that it, that it works particularly well or works for some students particularly? I, I think um, where, where it seems to me uh, it, it works for is, um, it is for students who come and study um, without a particular notion of what they might do. Um, if, you know, if you come and study uh, at politics uh, at Huddersfield, you're an active member of a political party, you already have done the sort of rubber chicken circuit and so on and so forth, and, and you know that route, then to be honest with you, I'm not entirely convinced that the work placement adds an incredible amount. If you don't come with that notion, uh, I, I think it, it adds in. Now, I, I, I'm a historian of political thought, data is not really uh, my bag, uh, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm afraid, but there, there, there's there's two hopes. First, that it it, it creates a positive uh, employability route for students. But the other thing, I suppose, is that remember this isn't a work work experience in in the type of thing that maybe we did at schools. You know, the the purpose of this is not uh, purely to get another line on a CV or to show whether you can get into the office for nine o'clock in the morning or and those things. It is to try and show that link between. Uh, what we talk about in a politics degree and what actually goes on in in the world outside. So I'm mindful of the fact, John, that I haven't really answered your question, or, or indeed when I say I haven't really answered your question, I've, I've completely dodged the question about whether we have any d data that this works. I do appreciate that, but but this is, um, um, uh, this is something we cling to. Yeah, and I think possibly the you know the interesting one from political theorist point of view is that question of what count what constitutes working. Um, you know, is is it uh, is it there to in, in just to do employability, or is it there to to help with with wider understanding of politics? Uh, moving on to the next question, um, someone's asked Pete. You you've talked. You seem to be very agile in being able to modify the assessment and module requirements. Um, Somebody says that their university, this can take a long time in terms of the institution um, and they may have to gather feedback in year one to propose a change in year two for change in year three, whereas you seem to be shifting stuff fairly fairly quickly. Uh, can you tell us a bit about how the university has handled those sorts of modifications and changes? C certainly. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think two things uh, to this. There was a formal process put in place 
both um, in March 1920 and then in the summer between the academic year 1920 and 2021, which is um, if you had assessments which, um, which could be changed, that there was a simplified version of what we call SAVP, uh, uh, which you, you, you'll have a similar panel. Uh, so you, you could change that. I, I, I hasten to add um, that um, I had a good conversation with our chair of SAVP for this particular module and say, and they, the conclusion that we arrived at is that I didn't actually uh, need to um, make any alterations of the um, module specifications in terms of, um, of, of, of the module task because I kept the notion of three blogs and a 2,500 word essay. Um, and, um, and because the whole 90 hours doing of a work placement was actually in a different part of the spec that I was fully capable of doing that. So I was very lucky that we had a flexible system in that re respect, but had I needed to have done a, um, uh, a more comprehensive change, that the, the mechanism was in place to do that. Because I, I mean, without stating the obvious here, a politics work placement sits differently with a nursing work placement or a social work non placement, a statutory non placement, which, uh, you know, students on those courses, of course, had to continue to do them at the uh, at the next slot that was available to them. So we, we didn't, um, um, we didn't, um, uh, um, you know, have that restriction placed upon us. So, so we, we were, we were lucky. It, it is true, I should say, is that the normal state of affairs in changing an assessment task in a, a non-COVID situation um, is more arduous uh, and more bureaucratic, but they introduced at Huddersfield a way in which we could do that if there was pressing need, given light of the um, uh, situation, which I was very grateful for. Excellent, thank you. And I suppose also often comes down to how the module spec's written in the first place in terms of how much leeway it gives you on some of these things, I suppose, as well. Um, just uh, another question here. Somebody who's particularly interested in the community service learning slash community development aspect that you referred to around perhaps volunteering or some of the places where people are doing their work placement. Uh, do your support sessions for students provide students um, some support and opportunity to think through some of the ethics of getting involved in various uh, projects, working perhaps with marginalised communities um, on their placements? Well, that, that's a very um, interesting point, actually, because I, I, I should have said in the presentation, but didn't, um, um, that my model of the alternative assessment actually came from a, a module which I delivered in the academic year 1918, sorry, no, 2018, 2019, which was on uh, for community development students. Uh, I, I don't know if any of you are in the unhappy situation of being the old sweat in your department uh, who's capable of plugging a hole when someone leaves or, or, or goes off sick. And, and I did this and I noticed within them a, a, a lot of reflections. So I, um, I, I, um, I, um, uh, so I, I was I was grateful for that opportunity to that. Yeah, I mean, we define politics um, it, it exceptionally broadly for, from for the perspective of a work placement um, uh, in that a number of our um, students go on and do placements with members of parliament, but also uh, community development sessions. Uh, for example, one student um, um, uh, uh, who is from um, the Bangladeshi community in, uh, in, in Bradford, um, what she did for her work placement was 
work with a community development organization, which she already had previous links with, which was around about literacy for the um, older population in that community. Uh, we also um, get talks from, you know, civil sector organizations. Um, uh, the, these talks, I hasten to add, this year were were reduced to them doing sort of 10 minute uh, video sessions. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a, on the board of a charity in, in a part of Huddersfield called Paddock, which is a is, is a, uh, a quite a deprived area in, in Huddersfield, which um, does a number of community related projects and, and our um, chief exec um, did a, a, a um, did a, a, a little video. Um, so you know, we, we, we do do that. About the ethics, uh, I, I wouldn't say we, we do, but to be fair, that that's, a, that's a, a, an, interesting, an interesting reflective point. Um, you know, if, again, bearing in mind that this is a warts and all discussion uh, uh, process, sometimes I feel about work placement programmes is that we are so geared up to getting students their work placement. And to be fair, that is an important part, but sometimes we miss the really interesting conversations. Um, uh, and, and that, you, you know, still in the back of our mind, we see these as being work experience uh, and, and we miss something. So um, I don't think that we, we talk per se about the ethics, but we certainly present potential opportunities, and they would obviously be regarded as being politics for work placements. And what probably is going to be the final question uh, in terms of time, uh, somebody's asked about gathering student feedback. I suppose quite often we have default um, feedback things, asks about the lecture and asks about you know, the reading list, etc. Clearly you've got to a range of different questions, perhaps you're asking about this. Can you tell us a bit about how you gather student feedback and the sort of things you ask students for feedback on? Well, I, I, um, um, I we, we have a, a standardised, well, we have two standardised versions. I'm sorry if you can hear my cat meowing in the background. I do, I do feed her, I hasten to add. I don't think she's quite got the notion that when I'm talking to the computer, I'm not talking to her. Um, I, um, um, uh, so th th there's two standard points. You have something called a mid-module mid evaluation. So that's an, in an informal process whereby, and as I'm sure you're aware at universities, most informal processes at university are indeed quite formal, uh, where we send around a set of questions. The notion being, therefore, is if something isn't going quite right, midway through the module or if students have a particular concern about a module then this is raised at a time in which we can do one do do, do sufficient um things um then there is the formal end of module evaluation which actually one gets far fewer people responding to, to that um for, for me um i i did all of the sessions with the students uh, i i'm personal tutor to half of the students in the second year they all have me for everything and I, I think it's fair to say that that, that that we have the kind of relationship that um, um, in, in which no truths uh, well sorry in which they feel perfectly capable of speaking truth to power um, so there is those informal mechanisms um, uh, as well, which I think are, are just as important, even though they are as quantifiable in the, in the broader sense. I just realised, I've just noticed that Bob's with us from, uh, so we've got a, an international flavour of the audience. I, I wondered if, if, if Robert Williams was, uh, was my friend from Ohio, and I can tell by the comments that it definitely is, so <laughs> uh, hi Bob. Does that answer that question, John? It does indeed, and we're just coming up to the end. Uh, we'll let people go just sort of uh, a few minutes before the hour in case they've got other meetings starting on the hour to get to. So can I just thank uh, Pete for a really excellent uh, presentation. Um, you know, work placements is still something which are, you know, non-standard uh, in politics degrees, and we're all learning from uh, from the experience of those who, who've gone before us. Um, 
excellent way in which you, you know, really set out some of the thinking, some of the dilemmas and how you can overcome some really practical problems of how things had, uh, had unfolded. Um, to everyone listening, thank you for attending. If you enjoyed this webinar, our next webinar is on Friday, the 11th of June, uh, this Friday, uh, between 3 and 4 p.m., where uh, Andrew Millican and uh, Thomas Robinson from Durham University will be discussing flipping the COVID-19 classroom. So please um, think about attending that, uh, tell your friends uh, and colleagues, and um, you know, as I say, if, if you're not a member of the PSA, uh, please consider joining. It's a great organisation uh, and allows us to uh, run events like that. So thank you very much indeed, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.